All right, in the second video for module three, we're going to talk about energy and cell metabolism. So remember, a big part of this class is talking about the building blocks of the cell and how those building blocks are formed into larger units of the cell. Well, forming these building blocks into larger units requires energy. So now we're going to talk about how we get that energy. First, I'd like to point out that bond energy is the amount of energy it takes to break a bond. And this uh, we're measuring here in kilocalories per mole. So for instance, a OH bond between just oxygen and hydrogen here contains 110 kilocalories per mole. It's a pretty strong bond. This is covalent bonds are much stronger than other types of interactions. Again, if we look over here at a double bond between carbon and oxygen, that has 170 kilocalories per mole. If you look down here at our non-covalent interactions, such as ionic and hydrogen bonds, hydrogen bonds have one kilocalorie per mole, so they're much weaker. So there are two main ideas here that are sort of in opposition to each other that we're going to talk about. The first is anabolism. Anabolism is the biosynthesis of cell-specific molecules that uses energy harnessed from catabolism. So catabolism is the breakdown of food and molecules, excuse me, molecules that generates energy and small building blocks. So primarily what we're going to talk about in this lecture is catabolism. So that's large molecules being broken down into smaller molecules plus energy, and energy is the focus of this lecture. This is as opposed to anabolism, where these small molecules plus energy are used to form larger molecules. This is analogous to what we talked about in our last lecture. If you imagine these are amino acids, they're going to come together uh, with the expenditure of energy to form a protein. Uh, so this could be any building block into a larger molecule. That's an anabolic process, whereas we're going to be talking mostly about catabolic processes. This is an overview of the entire um, metabolism we're going to talk about today. This is a big, a big figure. It's complicated, so we're going to break it down piece by piece. But just basically, we're going to be talking about glycolysis, which is a enzymatic process um, catalyzed by 10 different enzymes. Um, this is called a metabolic pathway. It's going to take glucose and break it down into pyruvate and some energy-carrying molecules. Uh, we're going to then talk about the citric acid cycle which occurs inside the mitochondria. This is mainly generating high energy electron and proton carriers. And then we're finally we're going to talk about the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation, which is where the majority of energy in our bodies is produced. So ATP is the energy currency of our body. ATP contains two high energy bonds. These are the bonds between these phosphate groups that you see on ATP. So if you have AMP, which is um, just a monophosphate, and you add an inorganic phosphate group plus energy, you'll get ADP. Again, if you add another inorganic phosphate, you'll get ATP. And ATP carries around energy in these uh, high energy bonds between the phosphate groups. So like I said, this is a major energy currency of the cell. What we're going to be doing is breaking down glucose uh, with oxygen is required in the last step. We're going to be producing carbon dioxide, water, and of course energy. This is going this energy is going to be used to take a DP, which again has two phosphate groups, one inorganic phosphate, this energy to produce ATP. So this whole process is producing the ATP, which is how we spend energy in our bodies. So again, these two processes are coupled. You have glucose here being 
uh, broken down into carbon dioxide and water with the release of energy. This energy is then being used to change ADP into ATP. So again, this would be a catabolic process because it's a breakdown. And this down here would be an anabolic process because it is a creating or a building up process that requires energy. So ATP provides the energy for synthesis of all the, per, all the uh, macromolecules that we're going to be talking about, proteins, nucleic acids, polysaccharides, and fat. It's responsible for driving active transports across membranes. Uh, it's responsible for nerve impulses, which is how your brain works, muscle contraction. That's very important that we know where uh, and how ATP is used. Again, there are two types of reactions releasing or acquiring energy. These are coupled by enzymes. So if we want to spend ATP energy, um, and we want to make, for instance, like I was talking about, make a protein out of amino acids, okay, that requires energy, so we're going to have to get that energy by breaking down ATP into ADP. And all of these processes are catalyzed by enzymes. These processes also take place in many steps. For instance, here you can see a metabolic pathway. And that's where a group of enzymes, for instance here, enzyme 1, 2, and 3, work together where the product of one enzyme is the substrate for the next one. So if you look here, our substrate, this little green triangle here, we take that green triangle in enzyme 1 and we make a product which is this purple rectangle. The purple rectangle is then the substrate for enzyme 2 which turns it into this kind of funky shaped blue object here which is the substrate for enzyme 3 and we finally get our end product this little orangish yellow square. So this is a metabolic pathway because the product of one enzyme is a substrate for the next enzyme. This is how the uh, metabolic processes in our body that generate energy work. So the first process is called glycolysis. This is the stepwise oxidation of glucose. Remember, oxidation is the loss of electrons. It begins, uh, it begins with glycolysis. So this process occurs in the cytosol of the cell. The first half of glycolysis uses two ATP molecules. So, in fact, to get this whole process started, we're not generating energy yet. We're using energy. One ATP, two ATP are used. And in this series of events, again, glucose is the substrate for hexokinase, which creates glucose 6-phosphate, which is the substrate for the next enzyme called phosphoglucose isomerase, and on and on in a metabolic pathway that ends up in the production of two three-carbon molecules. Then we're going to take these two three-carbon molecules in the second half of glycolysis and create two NADHs, which are high-energy electron carriers, and four ATP. Here we have two, and here we have two. So the net um, result of this whole process, remember we put two ATP in and got four out. So the net result is two ATP, two NADH, and two pyruvate. Pyruvate is the end product of this um, this uh, glycolysis process, and this is pyruvate, a three-carbon molecule. Again, you get two of these because your original glucose was a six-carbon molecule. We've broken it down into two three-carbon pyruvates. So we mentioned we got ATP out of glycolysis, and we talked about what ATP was, how it's kind of the energy currency of the cell, but we also got two NADH molecules out. So I'd like to briefly explain what those are. These are high energy electron carriers. So what in the process of glycolysis, you're taking NAD plus and turning it into NADH. The difference is just right here. Okay? So the oxidized form of the electron carrier, remember oxidized has a less electrons. It's shown on the left here. 
And the reduced form is shown on the right. So the reduced form has gained electrons. So this uh, NADH has one more hydrogen ion and two more electrons than any NAD plus does. So this is to carrying a hydrogen and two high energy electrons. Now this is not a molecule that we use to spend energy throughout the cell. This is more of just a transport molecule. This is transporting energy in the form of high energy electrons from one part of metabolism to the other. So the next step after glycolysis is a quick change from pyruvate into acetyl-CoA with the loss of a carbon dioxide molecule. This happens inside the mitochondria. So upon entering the mitochondrial matrix, an enzyme complex converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. And in that process, we get a CO2 and one additional NADH, which again, remember, is a high energy electron carrier. So we then get into the mitochondria. And this is where our next two big processes are going to start, and that's the citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. The mitochondria is a very unique organelle, and that is it has a double membrane um, makeup with an intermembrane space. So you essentially have an outer membrane and an inner membrane that has a lot of surface area, so it's kind of wound around in this uh, complex shape. And between the two um, membranes, you have what's called this intermembrane space. So inside the mitochondria, and we do the next process. Remember, we converted pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is fed into the citric acid cycle. Again, this is a metabolic pathway because the product of one enzymatic reaction is the substrate for the next. So here, this is a series of steps where citrate, as shown here, is oxidized. So it's losing electrons and it's releasing uh, carbon dioxide, two carbon dioxides for each acetyl group fed into the cycle. So in the process, you get three NAD plus is turned into NADHs. Again, so these are our high energy electron carriers. You get one, two, three. You get one ATP or GTP, depends on the uh, type of cell. GTP is a similar energy carrier to ATP. And you also get FAD H2, which is again a high energy electron carrier of a different type. And because the final product of this cycle is citric acid, which is also the first uh, part of the cycle, it's just a loop. And as long as you keep feeding it acetyl-CoA substrates, NAD+, things like that, it's just going to keep going on and on and on in a circle, producing these high-energy electron carriers. And remember, these NADHs, ATPs, and GTPs are all holding the energy that was contained in our original glucose molecule. So we're breaking down the energy in that glucose step by step by step and transferring it to these other molecules. Okay, so we've talked about high energy electron carriers. So what's the point of those, these NADHs? Well, the point is um, to feed the process of the electron transport chain or the respiratory chain. So the electron transport chain is the final process. This is the third process. And this is a series of electron transporters embedded inside the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So here is the outer membrane, here is the inner membrane space, and here is the matrix inside. Okay, So we have these proteins embedded in this membrane here. And what we're doing is we are taking the energy from our high energy electron carrier, which again is NADH. We are removing the hydrogen and using the energy in the electrons to pump the hydrogen up into the inner membrane space. So, um, and when I say hydrogen, these are actually protons, because when you see H+, that means the hydrogen has lost an electron, which is essentially just a proton.
So the energy in these high energy electron carriers is being used to pump protons from the matrix down here up into the intermembrane space. And what's very important is the final electron acceptor, so the electrons follow this path through these enzymes, giving off their energy, um, basically funding the process of moving hydrogens into the intermembranes. And the final electron acceptor is oxygen. And this is where most of the oxygen that you breathe goes. You have to have oxygen to accept these final electrons coupled with two H pluses to form water. If you don't have oxygen, you can't form, you can't do this, uh, this process. So what's the point of pumping all those hydrogens into the intermembrane space? Well, the point is to drive these very special enzyme called ATP synthase. ATP synthase is responsible for the majority of the production of ATP in our bodies. So it sits in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And remember, we've gone to all that trouble to get those hydrogen or protons pumped up here into the intermembrane space. So let's think about the analogy of a dam. We have our protons sitting up here just like we have our water sitting up here. And we have very little, uh, a little amount of protons down here. So the protons want to flow downhill, just like this water would like to flow through this dam. So there is a potential energy here. And then what ATP synthase does is it harnesses that potential energy. And as hydrogen goes down through ATP synthase, it actually turns the molecule. It turns the protein, much like a turbine. And that provides the energy for turning ADP into ATP, the final product of metabolism. Um, Again, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1997 was won by uh, Boyer and Walker for elucidating the mechanism by which ATP synthase works. So it uses an, a proton gradient. Remember, we got that proton gradient from pumping protons in by using the energy from our high energy electron carriers to create ATP. Uh, here you can see the two processes coupled together. Here's our citric acid cycle. Remember, citric acid cycle is that um, eight-step cycle that keeps shooting off our high-energy electron carriers. Those high-energy electron carriers are delivering protons and high-energy electrons to our electron transport chain which is using the energy in those electrons to pump protons up here to the intermembrane space. The protons then flow back downhill through ATP synthase, providing the energy for turning ADP into ATP. This process is called oxidative phosphorylation. So I'd just like to wrap up, kind of come full circle. This is the uh, big diagram I showed you at the beginning of this video. Um, so basically what we're talking about is how cells form ATP. They form it by complete oxidation of nutrient molecules. In this case, we're talking about glucose. And they oxidize that glucose into carbon dioxide and water. And they do this in many small steps. They do this because if they just did it in one big step, you would release all the energy at once, and a lot of that energy, be, would, energy would be wasted. However, going through this massive uh, process of glycolysis, citric acid cycle, electron transport chain, and oxidative phosphorylation, you little by little take the energy out of glucose. And that way it can be released and stored as ATP. All right, thanks for listening. That's the end of the video for Module 3.